Hello, and welcome to the fifth of six video presentations designed to acquaint you with the third edition of the CQI 11 Plating System Assessment. These videos will familiarize you with the document layout and the overall process, train you on how to complete each section, and provide insight into the exact expectations for completion of the assessment. The AIAG Continuous Quality Improvement, or CQI 11 assessment, was developed as a self-assessment to help automotive suppliers develop a planning management system to meet the electroplating industry's best practices. A team of process experts, including chemical suppliers, industry consultants, applicators, and automotive OEMs contributed to the development of this document. The Excel file contains the actual assessment. There are nine process tables included in this assessment. The nine processes covered are zinc and zinc alloy plating, mechanical plating, decorative plating of metal substrates, decorative plating of plastic substrates, electro polish and chrome flash, hard chrome plating, electroless nickel, hydrogen relief, and equipment. For each item, the assessment allows for three ratings conforming, non-conforming, or not applicable. When the actual condition fully meets the guidance, the rating is conforming. When the actual condition does not fully meet the guidance, the rating is non-conforming. These ratings are not judgments, but observations. The reviewing customer will determine if the ratings assigned by the assessor or assessment team are acceptable to their requirements. When a rating of non-conforming is assigned, the applicator should review the existing conditions and or practices and determine whether improvements should be made or if the current practice is justified. Justification should be described in the objective evidence and comment section for each item. The rating of not applicable or NA should only be used when the item does not apply to the process under review. Let's walk through some of process table A as an example. First, identify the process line and its type. The tables are divided into sections by process step or category. Each category is populated with a list of control points based on industry best practices. For each control, minimum requirements are provided for the type of control and the monitoring frequency. Columns containing requirements are locked. It is your responsibility to fill in the actual conditions and compare these with the minimum requirements to assess whether each is conforming. Alternatively, each process table has a form builder tab that can be used to construct an actual representation of the material flow. Let's try with process table A. You'll see that the header is the same as before, but the rows are unpopulated. On the right hand side, you'll find the form building macro, which includes a list of process steps. Checking the box next to a step and pressing the populate forms button will add a corresponding section to the table. Add sections for each step of the process, including rinses between process steps. Note that the rinse section is identical for all rinses used. It is best to add one control parameter at a time. If you make a mistake in the layout, you must clear the sheet and start over. Once completed, you can use this form in place of the pre-made process table. If you prefer not to use the form builder, you can cut and paste within the process table to create the desired layout. This completes our review of the process tables contained in the CQI 11 assessment, how to fill out the process tables, and how to use the form builder to accurately represent the line layout. Please join us for video 6, which covers the equipment sections. Thank you for watching this video. For more information, contact quality at AIAG.org. And don't forget to check out the other videos in this series.